brothers and sisters, it's amazing. Temples. Temples are the center of our attention. Covenants and temples. Temples, covenants. Making covenants, keeping covenants. The church just put out a video about the Manti Temple with Sister Johnson talking about the symbology with lambs and the industry there happens to be uh, lambs and sheep. And it's great. I have my own thoughts about it, and I would love to share them with you right now. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to The Last Dispensation. You're living in it. I am your host, Troy. Um, so about four hours ago, three or four hours ago, a video was put out by the church. I love them because you know how we all look at our our role, our, our YouTube shorts and reels. I don't really watch those, but I know other people that do and they get addicted to them. Well, Heavenly Father, the Savior and the Savior, the Lord puts out his shorts and they're these little two minute videos once in a while. So this is church news. Um, a beautiful reminder in the Manti Utah temple of the lamb of God. This is president Johnson of the relief society. I'm not reading the article or it's not an article. It's a video. Um, watch it. It's really neat. Um, but I'll let you go do that on your own, but I'm going to talk about it real quick because a few things came to my mind. So we're going inside the, you go inside the newly renovated Manti Utah temple where a stunning piece of art captures the essence of our savior, Jesus Christ in the entry of the Manti Utah temple. There's a breathtaking painting that you just have to see. It depicts Jesus Christ as the shepherd cradling a lamb with a flock of sheep around him set against uh, the backdrop of Utah's picturesque, picturesque, sorry, San Pete Valley. This painting is not just a work of art. Like all other pieces and works of art, they are there not to just bring peace and the ambiance, the ambiance, ambiance, but to also uh, serve a purpose. They are symbolic and the reminders of covenants that we make um, and of why, <clears throat> what covenants we are making. It's a profound reminder of the roles Christ plays as our, as, in our lives as the Lamb of God, he made the ultimate sacrifice for us, atoning for our sins. As our shepherd, he guides us, he cares for us, and leads us back to our heavenly home. So, President Johnson, she said, through the ordinances, quote, through the ordinances performed here, we have the opportunity to make covenants with God, which are steps on our path back to him, made possible because of our Savior. She mentions the woman at the well and a few other things. I'll leave the link. You need to go watch the video. I thought about my own symbology or things that were coming to my mind as the Savior being the Lamb of God and also the Good Shepherd. Well, the symbolism here is rich and it's deeply rooted in Scripture. The Lamb represents innocence and sacrifice, qualities embodied by our Savior Jesus Christ during his atonement. The Shepherd reflects leadership, care, and guidance, illustrating how Christ watches over his flock. And I, I thought that was neat. I never thought about that before, that he's a lamb and a shepherd at the same time. That means that he could lead, but also have empathy for us. So, San Pete County, where the Manti Temple stands, is known for its sheep farming, making this imagery especially relevant to the local community. This connection between the local landscape and the gospel through art makes the temple experience even more personal and more profound. As we stand in this holy place, surrounded by symbols of Christ's love and sacrifice, we are reminded of why we gather in the temple to make and renew covenants, to find peace, and to prepare to meet God. And that's what we are doing. We're helping others come unto Christ. We're guiding them as his. We're helping the good shepherd. So I wanted to talk to 
people that weren't members of the church. And if you are here um, and you've clicked on the video, please stay. You will learn more about the gospel of Jesus Christ and the man Jesus Christ and what he wants you to do um, more than anywhere else. <clears throat> I promise you that. And I welcome you. So to make and renew covenants, to find peace and to prepare to meet God. So here's the things I was thinking of. I told you good shepherd and the lamb, right? Why is the savior, both the lamb and the shepherd? Well, he's referred to as both. Each title highlights different aspects of his divine roles and attributes. So here, this is really neat, brothers and sisters. The title lamb of God emphasizes Jesus Christ's role in the atonement. As the lamb, he was sacrificed for the sins of the world an act that was both infinite and eternal. This sacrifice is central to our Heavenly Father's plan of happiness and the purpose of our creation. The imagery of the Lamb, which is often associated with purity and sacrifice, underscores His innocence and the suffering He endured for humanity's sake. This role was foreordained and is celebrated in the scriptures as the ultimate act of love and obedience to our Heavenly Father. So, here's the Good Shepherd. On the other hand, the title of the Good Shepherd illustrates Christ's ongoing relationship, relationship with us, the, the church of the firstborn. That's right. Not just the world. The Lamb of God is for the world. The Good Shepherd is for us. As the shepherd, he leads, he guides, he protects his flocks. We are the believers in Jesus Christ. We are his elect. We hear his voice. Other flocks, they don't know our shepherd's voice. And that's a literal thing. The role involves active engagement with his followers, us, where he calls us by name. He gathers us. We're gathering Israel, right? We're helping the shepherd. And he leads us along the path of righteousness. The good shepherd knows each of his sheep personally, individually, and cares for their well-being, reflecting a deep level of, indi of individual concern and love. Brothers and sisters, this role is not only pastoral, but also personal. As the Savior seeks to bring all into the fold. He wants those others in humanity to come. Uh, but we know that, that we must make covenants and, and we must keep covenants. Once we make those covenants and we keep them, repenting often, then we're offered peace, purpose, healing, and joy through the fullness of the restored gospel and the plan of salvation. Now, complementary roles. These two roles are deeply interconnected. The shepherd's willingness to sacrifice himself as the lamb reveals the depth of his love and commitment to his sheep. Conversely, his sacrificial role as the lamb of God is made more poignant by his personal care and the guidance as the good shepherd. So, this duality. The shepherd and the lamb enhances the us, the believers, understanding of Christ's character and mission. He is the savior of the world, yet he's the savior of his sheep. That is his mission. It's twofold, emphasizing both his divine authority and his empathy, his intimate loving involvement in the lives of his followers to wrap this all up i would say jesus christ is both the lamb and the and the shepherd he offers a complete picture of his mission and his methods as the lamb he atones and redeems as the shepherd he leads and he nurtures this combination of roles serves as a powerful powerful testament to his divinity brothers and sisters and his perfect and his perfect empathy and love for humanity but remember 
we are not just humanity. We have a responsibility not only to bring others to Christ, but to keep our covenants. Otherwise, we will have plan B, which is the terrestrial kingdom. But that's glorious beyond description. And I don't understand because a lot of people look at that like it's something um, second to uh, like it's like it's a, a bad thing. No, we have to work to get upper management. Do you remember the visual I made where I separated the three kingdoms of glory? And that's how I look at them. You don't have to look at them like that. But if you want upper management, you got to do the work, right? If, if you want to get a white collar position in your life. And when I say white collar, I mean, you know, like white collar, meaning you wearing a suit. Professional. If you want to be a professional, you got to work, right? You got to go to college. You got to go to school. You got to have to get the training and you have to make the sacrifices. Well, you kind of have to do that for uh, middle management too, but just not as much. Um, there's more responsibility here. Or you could just settle and go to the telestial kingdom, but either way, that is heaven. So in essence, everybody gets there. It just depends on where you go. I'm shooting for A. I want my heavenly Father and Jesus Christ I want the fullness of joy. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, if you're not a member of the church, but would like to learn more as time goes on, who we are and how we talk and what mean, what we mean by what is the Holy Ghost? What is the spirit he's referring to? Um, what is the Book of Mormon? What are these scriptures? then um, subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Brothers and sisters, don't forget to share the video and um, also click the bell if you haven't um, to get more about our faith and our symbology. Remember, each symbol, each scripture we learn about brings us closer to the Savior. And He's not the end all. Heavenly Father is. That's where we want to get.